round pick this upcoming draft. That man might be first. That man playing really I, well. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I seen something that it said he might be first. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I remember, because um, when I went out there uh, before OTA started, I actually seen him. And I'm like, man, this dude, I remember going against him in pass pro. And he was, oh. hey, he was <laughs> not, not. He used to be killing it, though. Yeah. Like, killing it. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, man. I don't know if he could play linebacker because he was like, you know, taller and slimmer than. Yeah, like, I don't know if he could play linebacker, but he need to be at DN. <laughs> oh, I thought he'd be an edge wrestler. But I remember that when we. That's what I thought. Him. That's what I mm-hmm. thought. He'll be now. You know, when he gets to the league, I think he'll be a great fit in the three four defense. Yeah. But, uh, but I was like, man, he's come a long way uh, mm-hmm. from, and that's just another testament to being in that program and having the right type of guys in front of you. Yes, um, that you can learn from, and they actually want to, you know, pass down what they learned to to the younger guys. And yeah. you know, this ain't no um, Utah recruitment uh, <laughs> episode. It ain't. Um, you know what I mean? But it's true though. Like we just really had a really good team of guys, mm-hmm. day in and day out, year in year out, that really wanted each other to succeed. Um, mm-hmm. And we all stay in, in, in touch somehow, some way. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like I said, moving on from college, you ended up with in your senior season, 81 tackles, seven and a half for losses. Um, one and a half sack. <laughs> <laughs> one one scoop of a fumble that you got to talk about a quarterback. And then we're going to throw that stat in there too. Since you oh, want to be funny. Not, this is going to be funny. Not. <laughs> all right <laughs> but, but tell us now let's move into you know the league um tell us about the draft process obviously mm-hmm. you like you said you were moving up the draft boards throughout the senior season um mm-hmm. now tell us you know after the season's over kind of every player knows you know that's the super hectic time because every agent that's been praying to get a chance to talk to you and do it the legal way is <laughs> it, it. now at your door knocking at your phone ringing texting like you can't get away from it and like every day you wake up you kind of have to figure this stuff out and then you know mm-hmm. people always say i think you know I, I heard you know if you do this like i never had a job growing up right like mm-hmm. this nfl is my first job yeah right yeah. and what I heard when I was growing up was, you know, and obviously I didn't know if I was going to make it to the league or not, but I always remember hearing, you know, if you do get a shot at the league, this could be the the only interview you ever need in your life. Yeah. Right? So I remember my job process and being in that moment, in that time, um, like I had to make decisions on certain things because I, I had uh, an AC joint sprain. Yeah, the whole senior season, actually the USC game, I got knocked out, and yeah, um, no, my shoulder came out of place. I had to put it in, and I missed the Washington State game. Thankfully, we had a bye week, so I was literally getting my shoulder shot up every week just to play. Every week, I shouldn't be saying that, but you got it. Hey, they know what it is. <laughs> Come on, man, we don't lie over here. <laughs> but. But I was I was getting you know I was getting it worked on every every week just to go out there and play and that's mm-hmm. the reason I had on the yellow jersey right that's the reason that's the um, reason why we didn't try and hit you and you tried to chuck me no, out. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm for real yeah, yeah. Real. like that was the reason right no my knee but, right <laughs> bro, what you doing? What you doing? But, going through the job process I couldn't even I accepted the uh the senior bowl invite. Mm-hmm. Right, because at the time I'm like, yeah, I'm playing it, you know. Um, I'll go out there, I'll do whatever. Like I didn't, you know, I was like, okay, well, for sure, like it's cool, I'll do it. And as the season prolonged, and then we got to the back end of the year, my shoulder, I was like, nah, I'm not 100 percent healthy, right? And I hadn't played like in practice, I didn't get it shot up. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I wasn't really practicing a ton. I would get certain things, but only in a certain arm. Yeah. And for game, I was, you know, 100%, let's go. Like, let's go. So the game was the only time I had ever got hit, blocked anybody, and my shoulder was numbed up. 
Yeah. So I'm like, man, that ain't good because I just did it all season. So if I go to the senior bowl, I'm going to have to do the same thing. I'm like, I don't really want to do that. You mm-hmm. feel me? Because I kind of want this thing to kind of heal. So that's why I didn't go. But, you know, tell us about, you know, obviously you went to the senior bowl. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that experience and, you know, just the draft process from, the you know, teams that were uh, either interested in you. Um, and if you have any weird draft stories from, you know, being at the combine, because I ain't gonna lie, I got asked a weird question. Well, <laughs> not a weird question, but a weird thing to do. Um, and he wanted me to play a staring game. Like, he just, just stare at him, like, just look at him, right? And I'm like, I'm not gonna be staring at this dude. I don't even know him. Mm-hmm. But he's talking about, uh, let's, it was, uh, you know, like the little round table, to, you know, down there. Yeah. Like, let's, let's, let's have a staring contest. He asked me no questions. That's the first thing he said, let's do a staring contest. So we do it. Obviously, I lose because I'm like, man, this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> right? So I'm like, whatever. He's talking about, that's how we test if you're an alpha male or not. So you, you realize that you wasn't an alpha but, male? Come on now. That's how you test? I'm staring? I, I mean, I've been trying to tell you you was an alpha male since you first came in to college, but whatever. Anyways, I ain't going to say nothing to you. <laughs> but... <laughs> Tell us about your draft process, um, senior bowl invite, um, and if you have any weird combine slash draft stories. I don't know if I have any weird stories, but yeah, I went on to the senior bowl, and I think that was a that was also a big point of the draft process for me because I think um, a lot of teams had questioned whether I could play uh, more than one position. I had played nickel and you know strong safety in in uh in college but like i had never really played in the post and a lot of the i'd say a lot of the senior bowl i was playing actually in the post and even during the game i played nickel but yeah so i think that was a big thing and they wanted to see if i could cover guys because i was covering a lot of tight ends and like i guess you could say little shifty slot receivers in in college so i think the senior bowl was big for more than more than one reason like I just said about the safety, uh, deep safety position, and also um, my my interviews. I'd say like I'd consider myself a smart football player. A lot of a lot of the reasons why I make plays, I would say, is from from the neck up, from the neck up. I think I make a lot of plays from from knowing when they come before they come, knowing the plays, knowing when the plays are coming before they come, mm-hmm. and uh, so I, I knew that you know getting in an interview and talking to a team that would be like a a good selling point for me. So I wasn't, I never really got nervous about any of the interviews when I was at the senior bowl. It was, it did. I think I definitely would advise guys from, from here on out. Like if they uh, are considering going to senior bowl, I would consider going due to the fact that it really gives you a little head start on the combine because there was a lot of long days, long nights, long, like early mornings, late nights. And it just kind of set us up for the, the combine because going to the combine, there was, early mornings, late nights, and it was just a long five-week process of of things that people didn't want to endure. And uh, so I, I definitely enjoyed, you know, I'd never been to Alabama before. Senior Bowl was great. We ended up winning the game. I was on the Lions side, and I think the other team was the Bengals, so we ended up winning that part. So that was obviously good. No one likes to lose. And I remember it was, uh, it was good. It was, it, was a, it was a good time. We had a few uh, mishaps. Some guys were late to meetings. That was that was funny to see, see some NFL coaches yell at some college guys coming out. Um, so that happened, you know, went on to the combine and, you know, a lot of, a lot of people were telling me they thought I would run a four, five, run a four. thought I would do this, thought I would do that. And um, I just remember like being kind of nervous, you know, going, going up to run my 40, you know, I, I knew I wasn't a jumper. I wasn't the most athletic guy in college, but I knew, that, you know, to an extent, I really believed I was fast. And I actually, I won't say any names, but one of our teammates, we actually bet to see who would run a, a faster 40. I'm not going to say who won, but I think we we know who won. I ended up winning, but whatever. So I remember we had Julian didn't, because Julian had, you know, he had got hurt at the end of our season. So he wasn't, um, he wasn't competing. And him and another safety from another team or from another college wasn't competing. But I remember they were actually watching the, watching the, I guess you could say the combine on their phone. 
So after I finished my first 40, I didn't think it was very fast. You know, and I was like, ah, kind of not, not down, but I was like, dang, I really want to run faster. And I came back and they had told me that I had ran a 449. And I'm like, dang, like, I didn't even feel like I was running fast. Maybe I could just, you know, I could go out on this next one and run a little faster. So next one, I get up there, I jump, jump at the line and it's really quiet in there. Not too many people in the stands and I'll, I'm running. And as I'm running, I could like feel my legs like picking up, picking up, picking up, picking up faster, faster, faster. And then right as I cross, I guess you could say the finish line, the 40, I get, it felt like I had just got like punched, like right in my left hamstring and pulled my hammy. And that moment, <laughs> that moment just like, oh, that was, it was really sad because I didn't get the chance to show my drills. Didn't get a chance to show, you know, I guess my versatility, which was a, a really big selling point for me going into the league. So that was kind of, that kind of sucked. So I, you know, I thought that would hurt my chances. So, you know, kind of just had to pray and, you know, just deal with the injury as you're know, going up to the draft. Draft comes around. I knew I wasn't going in the first round, but, you know, second round comes around, had a lot of guys go. And then third round comes around. And we had a few guys go. There was a few guys going ahead. And I never, like, bash on anybody's success. I'm always – I was happy for a lot of guys. I didn't even think – I didn't think I'd go to the third day. I know it was getting towards the end of the, you know, the second night and I had seen you and Julian go. I had saw Jalen go and I saw a few guys from guys I was training with go. And then there was like a few guys go and I was kind of like, dang, like that kind of sucks. Like I feel like I'm better than him, but you know, I didn't, I didn't wish bad on his success. You know, that was just what that happened was. And it was like pick one. I think it got to like pick 102. And I remember my family was in the living room kind of already counting me out. They were like, you know, we're going to have to get up early. Terrell's, uh, he's not going to go tonight. You know, already talking about what we're going to have for breakfast in the morning. And I was kind of like, dang, like, you know, we still got some time left. You know what I mean? And and then, you know, my, my phone, my brother comes in the room and he starts talking. We were playing the switch. And then my phone starts buzzing and it says Thousand Oaks, California. And instantly I'm thinking like, whoa, like, this is crazy. Like, is this really happening? You know, I, and I answer it. I'm shaking a little bit. And it's our, our GM, Les Snead, and he says, he says, Terrell, and I said, Les Terrell Burgess here. And he says, I was wondering if you would like to play some football for the Rams. And I'd say, I'd love to play some football for the Rams. And instantly, waterworks start going. Family starts screaming. Honestly, to this day, I don't know if I remember too much of what he said after that besides the head coach is going to call you. But I've seen the video, and I see what he says now. But I just – Instantly, I was just crying up with uh, just overcome with a lot of emotions. And that was a moment where I just like really felt like, wow, like this, this is really happening. Getting a chance to see my name called on TV was was amazing. And uh, I don't know, I wouldn't change it for the world. I, I'm blessed to be able to be here you know, from San Diego, best to be able to be here in Southern California, still playing for a great organization. And I'm just excited to see what else has in store, you know? And the video <clears throat> that you're talking about, for people who don't know, um, we will have that video. Oh, okay. We're going to have that video. Okay. So don't worry about it. Uh, we're going to have that video. Um, for everyone listening on Apple Apple Pod um, and Spotify, make sure you tune in to uh, Instagram and our Twitter at Mosmo Show one because you don't want to miss that video, right? You don't want to miss that video. You want to see a grown man cry. Go ahead and watch that video. Oh, you want to see a grown man cry, you say, huh? <laughs> Some people say squeal, but I'll say cry. Hey, but, you know, but definitely we'll have a video, man. Now, but the, I remember when I first seen the video, right? And we all got drafted on the same night, yeah. right? Me, you, um, Julian, okay. and Jalen, right? Mm -hmm. And... That was crazy, right? Just because we've literally been, you know, Jalen came in in 17. Mm -hmm. So we were all together for three plus years. Yeah. And it was crazy because I'm like, like people see my video of my draft and I'm like, okay. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not like over the top ecstatic. Cause I really, yeah. to be honest with you, you always see people videos like, you know, Everybody video you see when they mm -hmm. get drafted and they're like either some people are just happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Some people uh crying, you know, hugging everybody. But I'm not that type of dude. Like I'm yeah. not. <laughs> like I'm like I'm not super emotional. 
So I remember just being in that moment. I'm like, like before the call happened, and I'm like, I don't know, but what am I doing? Am I gonna cry? Yeah. Right. Am I gonna be like, I don't know. Like I really didn't know. Mm-hmm. So the first thing that happened was just like I was just like I got the call, and it was weird anyways because you know you get the call first and then they tell you. Um, so like for me anyways, I felt like that would have been kind of off for me because when I first got the call, that one that's when I would have been more emotional. Yeah. Um, more than hearing my name on the TV. But uh, you know, we all get drafted the same night, and I remember just still being more happy to me personally to see, you know, Julian go for one. Yeah. Um, when he did, and I think he would have went second round if he oh, didn't okay. have the, the knee injury. Um yeah, so I was I was super happy just to see him go. Mm-hmm. Um like we knew kind of where Jalen was gonna go because you know what Jalen did and everything like that. So um Jalen went, Julian went, I think I go maybe a pick or two after after yeah. Julian. And I'm excited. I'm happy. I'm like okay, cool, blase blase. And then I remember I'm in the back talking into uh the commissioner Roger Goodell on like a I don't know what it was, but like it was some video thing. I don't even know what it was for. I never even seen the video. <laughs> and Jess tells me, oh, Terrell just got drafted. Terrell just got that. So I'm like super high. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, <laughs> I'm like ecstatic. I'm like, oh, snap. Can you feel me? Like, I just know, like, you know, everything that you've, you've been through. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, if you ask her, like, I was genuinely more happy for you to go um, than anybody else, and that's kind of why I wanted to get you on 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 this episode yeah. because I feel like you know, no matter like where you are, you know what I mean, like what no matter where you are, all that matters is the type of work that you put in. Yeah, and you you really you legit put in the work. Mm-hmm. You feel me? And like, I was happy because I knew like you know you now you get a chance to do things for your moms you get to you know help whoever you needed to help and things like that yeah and i was happy for you so you got that prius <laughs> I knew that was coming hey i know you think i was gonna forget about that prius oh jeez, man this man was dry what that was 2004 75 Ooh, okay my bad my bad my bad player my bad i got you all messed up you oh, you're riding better than 04. Riding a little better than 05. Yeah, okay. Okay. This <laughs> man was driving the Prius. And you was hey, you ain't had no tents. No tents, fish bowling. Fish bowling. In a in a legit fish bowl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I miss my baby, man. Hey, no, you <laughs> don't. Don't lie. No, you don't. Don't lie. Now part. you now you got the real thing. You got that Tesla. You know, you know what it is. And fuel efficient. <laughs> gotta save the, gotta save the world, man. Save the earth. <laughs> you talking about fuel efficient? <laughs> you ain't, you ain't. You don't put no gas in that home. None, none. All electric. Mm. Charging. It's all right. You gonna get tired of paying hundred dollars in gas every week? Not every week. I ride my bike. Thank you. Oh, that man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hey, hey. The people that follow me, they know, they know, I ride the bike. I've been riding my bike that I got, um, let me see, maybe like three months. Really? I got over 100 miles on my bike. That's good. Then. I'm proud of you because you two you talk, know you do something like that. You talking about fuel efficient, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I don't leave nothing on the earth. I'm proud because you, <laughs> you one of the laziest people I ever met in my life. So I'm proud of you. Man, that was from 2016 to 2019, B. Oh, I'm okay. different now. I'm different. You're a different now. man. Yeah, that's right. Hey, you, you. got to be different in this. Yeah, right. <laughs> Otherwise, they go get you right. Shit. Yeah, mm. they gonna get you. You gonna be riding a bike forever. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna be riding a bike for real, huh? Yep. You went to hundred dollars a week, huh? Mm. You gonna be able to afford that? <laughs> no, sir. Man, what? Yeah, but. <laughs> but before we wrap it up, um, I want to talk about the when you broke your ankle. Yes. Um, personally, 
I can feel everything you about to say <laughs> because I still feel it mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, tell the people who don't know, um, you actually broke it against, um, the bears, right? The bears against Jalen. I remember. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's, that's, that's another thing I just thought about it. Damn, that just hit me. You broke yours against Jalen. Uh -huh. I broke mine against Julian. Dang, yeah. that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. Mm, gotta watch out for them too, huh? Yeah. But <laughs> gotta watch out for him. <laughs> but, but um, but no, but tell tell the people um, you know, kind of yeah. about that that process mm -hmm. of coming back, being in your rookie season, um, finally, you know, playing more, finally, you know, getting that the that that coach's trust to mm -hmm. put you on the field as a rookie because when you play as a rookie people just people don't understand yeah it don't matter how talented you is right mm -hmm. like that don't matter it don't matter what you did in college it doesn't it matter it doesn't not matter it don't matter what round you got drafted in mm -hmm. coach cannot trust you you're not putting you on the field you're not touching the field exactly if i can't if he can't trust you to do your job and do your job at a high level because what people don't understand that I learned very quickly and that coaches also help you understand very quickly is that you messing with their job, their money. <laughs> you know, people don't play by their money. I don't play by mine either, but you know what I mean? And I ain't got no kids. And you talking about you, you messing with their kids' money. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's going to be a problem, brother. Yeah, you're, no, not, you're, not, right. you're not getting on this field. You're right. dead. You're not getting on this field. So well, tell us about that. Like just from finally getting on the field, finally doing things in the defense that y'all was in. I mean, that's a stat mm -hmm. defense from top to bottom. I mean, dang, you get to play with with a guy like Jalen Ramsey, right? Um, Aaron Donald. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just the name of few. You got a lot of guys on offense and defense. Um, the talent level there is crazy, and mm -hmm. as a rookie. I think that speaks to one, how you you carry yourself as a player, being prepared uh, mentally and physically week in and week out. So yeah, tell us about that. Yeah, so last year in our seventh game, we were playing against the Chicago Bears on Monday Night Football. First Monday Night game. Um, I don't know what you know. I think it was I was really starting to get into a groove. I was uh, playing in dime on defense and a safety a little bit and. Uh, the whole game was, you know, I was doing what I could, you know, to help the team. I had like two third down stops, made a couple of tackles on special teams. And I was just, you know, out there flying around, you know, helping the team, you know, in any way I could. And uh, it was, I think it was the beginning of the fourth quarter, or like the end of the third quarter. I can't remember exactly when it was, but um, it was, shoot, we had just given up like a, a deep pass. And it was either the next play or two plays later. I remember the running back had came through the hole and I had, I was just like, okay, we need to stop their momentum at some point, you know, and I'm not really, I'm a pretty conservative football player. I don't ever put myself in a situation where I can get hurt. You know, I'm always, <laughs> I'm one of those guys that just likes to stay safe. Not, not saying I don't, you know, but I like he to want no smoke for real. Get in where I fit in, you know what I mean? Sometimes. You may so. puff it about twice, but you go uh, past it soon. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so then I remember the running back, I think it was David Montgomery. I think he came through the he came through the hole. And I kind of just went in there and I had went for his went for his legs a little bit. And like my body went one way and my leg went another way. And it kind of like we had a couple guys kind of smashed on top of my leg and my ankle just like kind of like snapped and instantly I'm like oh shoot like uh, I started screaming I couldn't stand up and I was like what the heck is going on and instantly I'm like hoping it's like a high ankle sprain hoping hoping so I get back to the x-ray room and I remember the first two x-rays didn't show a break so I'm like oh maybe you know maybe it's good you know what I'm saying maybe it's a high ankle sprain maybe I'm just overreacting a little bit third x-ray comes around and I'm like dang like it shows the breaks there's a broken fibula and I had to get MRI and do all those other things. But yeah, that was that was a big moment. I remember I had to take my jersey off right in there, sign it. You know, I wanted to do a jersey swap after the game with my guy Jay, but didn't get a chance to stay with it. But yeah, so that was that was a big moment for me, you know, and uh going through that whole process of the injury and the recovery process was 
it was tough. I think I I masked it pretty well, masked it pretty well when it comes yeah. to uh, yeah. you know hurting. I uh, I didn't really show anybody when I was hurting. I didn't, I didn't think I was hurting too much, but I knew there were some days where I didn't want to leave my apartment. And there was a lot of long days. There was there's some tough days. I I think the moment where I realized that like I was hurting was like the the first day I was able to walk in the Alter G machine. Um, I was bawling. Like I saw a video on my phone, like of me crying that day, and I I, I wouldn't change that that day for the world. Like that was the the moment I knew like you know I could I could play football again. And I was I was a little nervous I wouldn't play again because I was like dang like this is. Some days I'd walk into the training room and just be mad because I was just like, why? Why did this happen? But over time, I really started to realize that, you know, everything happens for a reason. And I wouldn't change that whole process, you know, for the world. I feel like I became a better man coming out of that. And I'm excited to be able to, you know, keep keep getting out there on the field with my guys and put the, put the league on notice of, you know, what I could do and what, what this team can do. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I'm already knowing, man. I did mine and I was like just kind of in shock. Yeah. Um, like I remember when it happened, uh, I think we were just about to go into the fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. And I'm playing in my first playoff game ever. And, you know, the atmosphere is crazy. We finally got a couple fans inside the stadium. I think we had about six thousand some fans. Yeah. Um and you know, we got the best fans in the league. We really do though. We really do. Right before you say anything slick, we really do. You know what I mean? Fans in the league. But. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie. When y'all played us last year, if y'all would have came this year here, I'm telling you, you would have, you'd have been like, oh snap. But like, it's legit. Not, huh? Yeah, nah, it's legit. It's legit. Okay. It, okay. It's legit. It's not for retweets. It's this legit. Okay. Um, <laughs> but retweet. I remember when I did mine and being in shock. I remember like Storm, they carted me off. Um, and I'm getting the x ray, and it mine doesn't show any, I didn't break anything, right? Um, I actually uh ruptured my deltoid ligament, so the ligament that keeps everything intact. I did the same thing. Um, I had a high angle sprain, I did that, and I had a fracture uh in my fibula at the top, not at the bottom, at the top. Oh, yeah, um, that's just how bad it was, right. And I'm thinking, oh man, I could still walk. Like I felt like I could put a little pressure. Like I didn't, I damn sure couldn't run at the moment. But I was like, I could, if I could walk, I remember going to the shower. I knew I was done, and I had to go shower. But I'm standing in the shower solo, mm-hmm. right? And then I walk back to my locker from the shower. I'm like, man, it's, it's, I don't know, but right now maybe mm-hmm. next week, right? And then I end up getting an MRI, and then the MRI shows the tear and all that type of stuff. And my first question was, like, I'm like, all right, I know I'm done for the year. Whatever. I got it. But my first question was like, okay, how long is this going to take to heal? Right? Because I ain't never did no ankle. Right? I only had two surgeries up into this, and that was uh, on my forearm um, my sophomore year. Yeah. yeah, you got smacked in the spring game. I didn't get smacked. I got hit by an overachiever. Let's call it what it is. Huh? You got smacked. <laughs> hey, cut it out, bro. I ain't never get smacked now. Nah. Hey, shout out to him. I ain't going to say it. <laughs> you talking about shout out? <laughs> hey, bro, don't be giving people no shout out to my Hey, man, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> about shout out to him. All right. Ooh, everybody remembers that spring game. Got smacked. But that surgery, and then I did my knee. So that was the first time I ever missed games was the knee. Mm-hmm. Um, and that experience was just totally different because, you know, that was junior year. I was doing what I needed to do. And I'm like, yeah, big deuce. <laughs> I'm out. I'm going to see y'all boy later. Oh, boy. <laughs> boy, I'm like, game four. I was like, yeah, I'm out of here. Cool. <laughs> he already knew what time it was. Mm-hmm. But then anyways, you know, th- I, that was, you know, that surgery was the first time I actually missed games because of a, a season ending, uh, anything. So when I did the, the ankle, I'm like, how long is this going to take? They're like, eh, maybe three, four months. So I'm like, one, I'm like, man, I ain't got no off season. <laughs> yeah. There's no off season because the rookie year is your longest year. You know, you go from, from being in college season, then you go to 
you know, the pre-draft, all that stuff. You're constantly working out every day, um, you know, that whole nine yards. Um, and then for us, COVID happened. Um, you know, that was a time in his own. Um, Crazy. Yeah, that was a time in his own. I was in Cali the whole time, as you know, mm-hmm. beating you in tennis and stuff. But I huh? was in, I was <laughs> – was what? Oh, no, don't, don't lie to your fan, man. Hey, we, we, we played – Hey, you remember, you remember John? Yeah, I remember John. Yeah, John, John, John gonna text me because he he gonna ask the question tomorrow. Yeah, um, ask Terrell about tennis and stuff. I say, John, man, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna text him. I'm gonna tell him right now. Nah, John, John, a good dude, man. But um, I'm like, man, how long is it gonna take? This ain't it. Mm-hmm. And it was winter time, and it was snow. It was dummy cold, bro. Imagine being on crutches. Or in that little scooter thing in the winter. I'm like, yo, yeah, this yeah. ain't it. And that's 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 an injury that I wouldn't wish on nobody. Nobody. I used to say <laughs> that about my shoulder. I had shoulder hey. The ankle? Oh my hey, God. the ankle is a different ball game. The ankle is different. Different breed. All the blood is just flowing down there. Oh my goodness. Bro, I had to got surgery in West in uh Green Bay, right across the street from the uh from the Packers Stadium, literally right across the street. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had to fly back the next day. I'm like, for one, I don't know if that's medically correct, um, <laughs> but it didn't sound like it was going to be a smooth flight. Mm-hmm. Right? So, and it's dummy cold in Wisconsin. It's like five degrees. So, mm-hmm. I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it probably was worse than that. But I just got surgery, right? And, you know, everybody knows the day after, that's when it gets you. So I got to get on a plane with a freshly cut up ankle, bro, from from the altitude to just being in that chair. I couldn't even put my leg up. And then the lady, the flight attendant, got the nerve to tell me, oh, sir, please put your leg inside. I'm like, yo, you don't see this on my, hey, get up out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, leave me alone, huh? Leave that me alone. Of- I'm right there with you. The day after might have been the worst day in the in all the days. Still to this day, that might have um, been the worst day I have on my that, that was a terrible time. But it's crazy what the body can do. Um, mm-hmm. and it's crazy what our minds can get us through. Because mm-hmm. obviously, you probably thinking, just like I'm thinking, yeah, I ain't gonna never be the same player. There's no mm-hmm. way in the world. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm playing, I'm like, I'm probably better. <laughs> I'm probably, I'm probably moving better. I'm probably mm-hmm. thinking even like, I'm pro- like everything about me is so much better now because I've went through some hardship that allowed me to correct other things about my game, about my body. Like when I was working on my ankle, my calves got so much stronger, like so much stronger. My quads, everything. Like my lower body is so much stronger. That I feel like now, early in the year, like I'm taking everything I'm doing so much more seriously than I felt mm-hmm. like I was already doing. Yeah. Uh, as a as a rookie, so I'm like, in a sense, it was a a blessing in a disguise. Now the disguise yeah. could have came in a, in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's let's call it what it is. It could have came in a different way. I wish it wasn't with the injury. Hey, it could have just rained and told me, yo, you know what I mean. You need to change but, it, your habits. Yeah, yeah. No. But it was a blessing in disguise, definitely. But um, you know, I feel like you know, injuries always teach you more about yourself than any type of success. Like that's just life. Like failures. Failures teach you so much more about who you are, what you can get through, um, more than winning. Like anybody could win, right? Mm-hmm. Like anybody could win, and anybody could feel like they're on top of the world. But as soon as you at the bottom and you got to pick yourself up, right? Like, I would, people always say, oh, man, what, how you feeling today? Like, you know, I'm like, I'm fine. Why? Because there's nothing much you can really do for me. Yeah. Right? Like, I always tell people, stop trying to look for other people to pick you up. That's not going to be. That's not, that's not how life works. Exactly. Everything that you need is inside of you. It's internal. It's just trying to figure out, is you going to figure it out? Yeah. Like, I legit know people that be like, ah, oh, man, this ain't, you ain't doing this for me. Or, or like, you know, blaming 
other people. You can't mm-hmm. blame other people mm-hmm. in life for for what's going on in one in your life or what's just going on in general, mm-hmm. right? Like that's not how I think you know life should be. That's definitely not how I do. I don't move like that, right? Yeah. Like I always feel like if it's on something on me, I can control it. I can control my controllables, and that's one mm-hmm. thing I learned from Coach McDonald. Um, it's like how you said Coach Scally gave you a quote that stuck with you and it still sticks to you to this day. Control your controllables is one that Coach McDonald gave to me. And I'm like, man, and that kind of fits your story. You control what you can control. You can't control all the other stuff. At all. You can control how you wake up, what moves you in, how you're going to work, mm-hmm. how you're going to treat people around you. Exactly. Like all that type of stuff you can control. You can't control if you got 10 tackles, 100 tackles on the season. You can't control that. Mm-mm. Right, but like it's those small little things, those details that really do add up um, over time. That I think just people, especially in our generation, let me say that, right? People, people in our generation, boy, they live in the worst days, bro. Man, it's like I don't know, but I but I try not to like. Everybody want this. Everybody want a handout. Everybody want a hot cookie, but nobody want to go bake it. <laughs> that's a good one well everybody i just, i literally just came up with that but <laughs> everybody want a, want a hot cookie but don't nobody want to go bake it i'm type of dude i'm gonna go bake mine because you know why because then i can have as many as i want as many as you want bro. and i could put whatever in it i could put i could put whatever i want i could put some honey on top some carrot <laughs> on top i could do whatever i want do you know why because i went out there and got it yeah when you gotta legit have your hand out asking people for stuff because you don't want to get up and go do something, I can't relate to people like that. Like that that stuff drives me nuts. Insane. Like nuts. From if it's family or if it's friends, I can't rock with you. Cause that's that's not like, like how we are. Like, I don't call myself an alpha male, but at the end of the day, that's what we are. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean. That's Outside what, of the staring contest, yeah, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, we, you right. We were, uh, that's that's what we are. We gonna keep it, honey. Like, that's what we mm-hmm. are. Like, we don't look for people to figure out a way for us to get out of something. Mm-hmm. We look for a solution on our own. We don't make excuses. We yeah. figure it out by ourselves at the end of the day, and you know, and that's how I gotta go. Like, that's just how I am. You know what I mean? I think football help instill that and Mm -hmm. pull that out of us even more um, than we knew that we had in us, you know, if we would have just stayed doing other things in life. Um, So, you know, I think that's a, that's just a big, big um, lesson that people just need to kind of learn. But I I get it though. You can't judge people though, because, you know, everyone has their own thing going on. Um, Everyone has their own set of trials Mm -hmm. and tribulations. So, Ooh, I just throw my hands up, but I don't swing them to the side, though. I just throw them up. I just throw them up. <laughs> <laughs> you think you funny. Hey, that was a good one, though. It was. It, was. it, hit, you, it hit you across the head. You was like, oh, what? man, for sure. That was a good one, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> hey, you can give him a props. You're but right. It's good. Lastly, mm-hmm. lastly. Y'all obviously made a big, big trade um, in this past offseason. Yes. Just give us a, you know, us Buffalo fans and, you know, also the Rams fans that's listening. Um, kind of just tell us, give us a little insight, if you may say. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Of kind of how being, uh, how different it is, I guess, from – Right, not throwing shade, nothing like that. Yeah, no, no. shit. I, yeah. I, 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 yeah, but <laughs> how different it is from having um, Jared Goff, who's a great quarterback. Uh, mm-hmm. If you like, I always tell people, like fans, if you you can call people trash, they suck, all this type of stuff. But if you play in this league, you're one of the best athletes in the world at the time. So cry about it. <laughs> I, I <laughs> at the end of the day. It don't make no sense to me, you know. Right, but that's like at the end of the day, like I'm pretty sure that's something I had learned though, because obviously when we we're in high school, middle school, all that stuff, we talking about ah, oh, he trash. But now you're like, hold on, 
Hold on. He one of the best players in the world, regardless of what you're talking about. Now, maybe he ain't having the greatest success against all the other great athletes in this world. Exactly. But at the end of the day, he's one of the best. But tell us a quick insight on having golf versus a guy like Stafford, who has played a lot of football, um, played with you know a lot of good football players over his time and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, and just the great start job had as yeah. you know, definitely as an offense. The defense <laughs> has always been there for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, the offense has always been really good too, but I think he just adds a different element. Yeah, I think I get this question a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I wasn't with Jared for too long. I, uh, um, he was a great quarterback here when he was here. Well, even the year I was the year last year, he was he was great. I think, you know, I I don't know too much about the difference between the two. I mean, I'm not on the offensive side of the ball, but I will say there's just like I I wouldn't say there's like a level of like. I think it's just just experience. Matt's been in the league a little bit a few years longer than than Jared has. I still think Jared's a great quarterback. I mean, he went to the, led the team to the Super Bowl a few years ago. Like, yeah. not a bad quarterback. I think the only difference I would say is just experience. Um, I wouldn't say I was here long enough with Jared to have like a big to see a big difference. You know, and mm-hmm. you know, I'm, not, I'm on the defense side of the ball, but yeah, we made a, the team made a trade. Obviously, I have nothing to do with that. I don't know. I don't know if fans understand that, but players don't really <laughs> the trade. Uh, I think it was a great trade. I'm excited for Jared. You know, I know their season, you know, hasn't started off, you know, the best of the way they wanted to over there in Detroit. But I really do believe that he can really, you know, help that organization over there. And I'm excited to see what else they do for the rest of the season and how he does over there. Um, you know, and as for us here in Los Angeles, you know, we've been playing pretty well, but you know, everything up to this point is doesn't really matter and it's not going to really help us for the next game, you know. Like, everything that happened before today doesn't even matter, you know, because we're 0 and 0 like, going into Sunday. You know, we have a game at 1 o'clock, and I think, you know, we've been playing pretty well, but if we go out on Sunday and crap the bed, everything that happened before isn't going to matter. So, yeah, we're playing well, and I, I hope we, you know, I, I'm sure we plan to – continue to play well and maybe we'll get a chance to see that Bills Mafia in uh, in LA this season and in February but you know we got to make it there but first that we would, start, start that, would be, that. that would be kind of cool now if y'all was to end up getting to that game in that stadium that stadium is nice oh my goodness beautiful like beautiful. that's what I'll give you that you lucky you get to play in a stadium like that every other week it's yep. indoor, right? It's closed. Indoor, closed. AC, AC. I might be playing snow. in thirty degree weather. What? Thirty degree weather. He no playing snow. In, he can't play in controlled AC. Controlled AC. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's it's beautiful. It's a it's yeah. a great stadium. I love the fans here, and uh, I'm excited to see what we we can do for the rest of the season. But you know, first we got to start with Arizona this Sunday, and hopefully it's a big game. Home. No, it's a big, big game. Big game is a big game, but yeah, it's a big game. You know what I mean? You yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I have to, a little right. jack there. That's all it is. But yeah. it looks like we've come to a wrap, huh? Mm. Sounds great to me. It's like we come to a wrap. Um, again, you know, appreciate the talk um, and giving you know the listeners. Um, you know, something to hold on to can kind of give us a glimpse of what it is like to be uh, in our life and our shoes every day, because, mm-hmm. you know, we're the only, we're, I think we're the 1% that gets to do this. Right. And I always tell people, people are always like, Oh, how does it feel to be in the NFL? All this type of stuff. And, you know, it's cool. It's, it's great because you're living a dream. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Everybody dreams about a lot of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And they don't really get a chance to experience the dream all the time. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're in that one percent where we're legit living this dream. Um, so, you know, that was the big thing. Why I wanted to start the pod was just to give people uh, a glimpse um, to what it's kind of like our journeys. Right. Because mm-hmm. we all play the same sport, but everybody's path is so different. That's right. Mm-hmm. It's so different, but I love all the stories on how we get to 
this level, right? We had Josh last week and his path on how he is the guy that he is to this day and how he's continuously striving. And then we come back and we have another great story in yourself um, and how you've gotten to this point and how there's so much more that you want to, you know, attain and everything like that. So, you know, I really do think that the people are going to super really enjoy this episode Mm -hmm. um, just because obviously we played together um, for one. Mm -hmm. And I know how you are, right? So, you know, it's this whole thing has been super authentic. So definitely appreciate you hopping on with us, man. Um, this is a wrap to mm-hmm. the second um, episode of the Mosmo Show. I want to thank everybody who has tuned in and who's going to tune in on our YouTube. Uh, make sure you continue to like and subscribe to the Mosmo Show 1 on YouTube and the Mosmo Show 1 on Instagram, Twitter, Apple Pod, and Spotify. Appreciate you all again. Terrell, thank you, brother, for hopping on with me. Thank you for having me, bro. Yes, sir.